Hello, my name is Todd Fletcher, and today I have another Quilt Geek tip. I've been asked several times by people about how to install Creative Studio on an Apple computer. And you can see here that I have Creative Studio, um, the latest version, installed and running on my Macintosh system. So that I can do editing, I can choose pattern files, and I can even run my Statler with this installation. Now what I'm going to show you today is some of the basics of getting what you need to be able to install this and then set it up and get it prepared. I don't actually have it connected to a Statler right now. This is my desktop. But you could do this in the exact same installation on a laptop or portable computer or something that you wish to eventually install and uh, set up on your Statler system. I want to show you here, uh, this is my desktop on my Apple computer. And first I want to show you that I am running a version 10.5. That's important to always keep your system updated to the latest version. Um, the next thing you need to do is some type of a layer onto which you can install Windows. You have two different uh, options here that I, you know, that I've used myself. You have VMware Fusion, and you have a program called Parallels. Uh, they're both priced at $79.99, so um, price isn't usually an issue, and they both have trials you can download. I personally use VMware Fusion. I found I like the way it works, the interface, and the support I get. Um, but you could use Paralyze, I suppose, if you want to. Go ahead and download the trial or purchase it and go ahead and do the installation. Okay, once you've installed your uh, virtual software, uh, which I have is VMware Fusion, uh, you'll then need to go ahead and install the operating system. And what's nice about these types of virtual machines is you can actually install Windows XP, Home Edition, Professional, uh, Vista, you can go back and install Windows 98, you can install version Windows 7 when it comes out. Whichever version of Windows comes out, you can go ahead and install that. In fact, you can install Linux and any other operating system on top of this software and then run whatever program you want. So as you can see, I have installed and am running v Windows XP Professional. That's what I would recommend in this particular instance. Okay, now we have the, ins you can see the desktop of my Windows installation. And you can see it's got a start button. It looks just like Windows. So now we're going to go ahead and install Creative Studio just like we would on a normal Statler. There are a couple of other adjustments to make, but let's go ahead and do that first. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install Creative Studio. The first thing we're going to need to do is be able to put some kind of CD or memory stick into our computer that we can copy onto the computer. Um, it's very important that if this is the very first time you've installed Creative Studio on any PC, you will need to do the full installation off of some type of CD or a package that you get in off the websites that has all the backup files, the .NET frameworks, the Galil controllers, and those types of things. You will need to have that installed first. Um, and once you've installed Creative Studio 1.1, 1.2, whichever version that comes before 2.0, it's going to be important that you go to your start menu, go to your control panel, go to add remove programs, and look for Creative Studio in your list of programs. And as soon as you find it, you're going to want to uninstall or remove it from the system. And you just want to remove Creative Studio. You can see that it's installed a Galil controller, um, the .NET framework. These are things that Creative Studio needs to run properly. Uh, the upgrade to 2.0 that's off of the website doesn't contain these large, very, very large installations. So that's why you'll need to get something off of a CD. Once you've made that uninstall, your computer is going to ask you if you want to restart. You can just say no, because we're going to go ahead and install Creative Studio 2 right on top of that. Now on my virtual windows, I've actually already installed 1.2 and then uninstalled the original installation of Creative Studio. So you need to go ahead and do that. When you do put anything into your computer, a CD or a memory stick, you do need to tell Windows that you want to control it in the Windows environment and not in the Macintosh environment. So you can see down on the bottom that I have a little disk here, um, and you can see that it's black. That means that my Windows is controlling the CD-ROM. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my memory stick in. And after a moment, you see that I now have a USB symbol that has appeared. That's telling me that my Windows is controlling that port. If that doesn't automatically come up, you may need to click on it. We see here on my desktop I have Creative Studio set up 2.0. I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto my desktop and then close that window. This has a little zipper on it. That means it's a compressed zip file. So I'm going to double click on it and you can see those are the files that are actually inside there. 
I'm going to highlight those and drag them off onto my desktop too. Now I'm ready to actually install Creative Studio. So I'm going to double click on that and let it run through the installation process. Now we'll ask you here what kind of controller type you have. If you're installing this on a standalone system that you're just using Creative Studio for your editing purposes and viewing patterns, it really doesn't matter which one you click on. If this is a system you plan on actually connecting to a Statler, and yes, installing Creative Studio in this manner on a Macintosh will allow you to run your Statler system. You will need to make sure that you choose the correct controller given whatever type of system you have. Okay, ask me to restart. We're going to go ahead and restart. Okay, now we have our Windows desktop and we can see here I have Creative Studio installed and now I to launch Creative Studio I go ahead and double click on the icon. It does send me the warning message that lets me know that we are going about to run in standalone mode. It says this whenever you're not connected to an actual Statler. And this is because I'm running this on my desktop computer and I'd like to use it to do some pre-design of my projects, preview patterns, and get ready. Then I can save that project and load that on my Statler system. Um, I will need to type in the controller or red key number that I use to have my patterns encrypted. That way I can view and add encrypted patterns to my project that I'm pre-designing. Click OK. OK, now I'm ready to actually work in Creative Studio. I can add patterns, create quilt groups, and add those patterns to my project and edit them. And do whatever kind of planning and because Creative Studio now has drawing tools, I can actually use this feature to come in here and actually start drawing patterns. Now another neat feature about this VMware Fusion is that I can actually come up and click on this Unity button in the upper right hand corner and when I do that it actually makes it look like I'm actually running my Creative Studio right inside my Apple as if it were an Apple program. Now I can click, edit, and do what I need to with this project. Now there are some limitations on what I can do without being actually connected to my Statler, but this will allow me to do a lot of pre-design, a lot of work ahead of time, and of course choosing out patterns. This also can be nice if you're working with a customer that they can sit and watch basically the idea of what you're trying to put together for them. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is I have a laptop sitting over here connected right to my Statler. And I'm actually going to show you a couple of setting changes you're going to need to make to make sure that the system will actually run your Statler. So let's go over there.